Well, a homeowner has spoken after another terrifying wave of gang violence in Melbourne. Her home, you saw this in the news, was ransacked and a visitor was held hostage by a gang of eight African youths. She's traumatised. They give her a smack to the mouth. Um, she's just very shaken up. It makes me feel like my home's not my home. It makes me feel very unsafe. Later, the same group also assaulted two teenage boys in another home invasion. The latest crime spree by African youth has prompted a war of words between the Victorian government and federal ministers, including this from Home Affairs Minister Peter Dutton. You know, people are scared to go out to restaurants at night time because they're followed home by these gangs. Home invasions and cars are stolen. And uh, we just need to call it for what it is. Of course, it's African gang violence. And if people aren't prepared to integrate, uh, if they aren't prepared to send their kids to school, if they have uh, you know, 10 and 12 year old kids wandering the street at night uh, uh, committing these offences, then uh, frankly, they don't belong in Australian society. Yep, but those comments have been seized on all week. It is an issue that's causing a lot of tension and debate in the community. Joining us to discuss it all further, Nelly Yoa, a South Sudanese footy player who's been the victim of gang-related violence himself. Lawyer Kop Manoa from the South Sudanese community in Melbourne. Plus businessman and victim of gang violence, Tony Fialides. Kot, let's go straight to you first. I want to read you an article from Rebecca Urban in The Australian Today. She's quoting a senior veteran police officer in Melbourne's West. He says, the reality is we do have an issue with groups of young men who largely come from Sudanese backgrounds who are absolutely obsessed with American gang culture and they're running around town acting exactly like a gang. So are you prepared to concede that Melbourne does have a serious problem with its Sudanese community and gang violence and crime? Thank you for inviting me on Sunrise. Uh, there is no doubt that uh, there are uh, a cohort of young people who are behaving uh, in disorderly manner and obviously uh, not uh, obeying or respecting uh, the laws. Uh, what we need to do as a society is to uh, deal with them in the toughest way possible, uh, just like any other criminal. Uh, the crime has no colour, uh, whether you are black, yellow or white. Uh, with respect to the second intervention is to have early intervention uh, approach uh, in a bipartisan way, uh, having uh, whether the federal liberal government or the state government uh, engaging with the African community, Sudanese community or South Sudanese community, to address some of these root causes. And in fact, uh, the state government has invested a lot of resourcing uh, in the African and Sudanese community to uh, devise early intervention approaches. Uh, thirdly, we don't need probably maybe uh, a community member like Nelly Yor, for example, putting down his own community without being part of the solution. Uh, Nelly Yor should come and engage with community leaders, youth leaders uh, on the ground. Uh, I have never seen him participate. All right. Uh, try now, and find solutions, well, and he should be a part of those solutions. Okay, well, look, we've got Nelly here joining us. Um, let's hear from you. You push back about this a bit with members of your community saying there isn't a problem. You say there is a gang problem and it needs to be addressed. Look, I'm absolutely without a doubt. You know, obviously, Cody's um, disillusional and he doesn't know what he's talking about. You know, end of the day, it's time to call a spade a spade. You know, um, with due respect to my own community, I want to see my own community be successful and I love my own community. But you've got, you've got leaders who are self-elected like Cod Mono. You've got leaders who spend their time taking selfies with their government official. And you've got, you've got leaders who are making a mockery of our legal system, wearing a high-vis vest, patrolling our, patrolling our community. Look, um, you know, that is the police's job, you know. That, that is nonsense. Stop embarrassing yourself. Leave that job to the police and the trained professional who can do this job. And my message is to Cod Mano is, you know, stop, stop being used as a guinea pig to the, um, to the Labor government because at the end of the day, you are playing with people's life. This isn't, a, this, is, this isn't a game. Enough is enough, you know. Well, Nelly, you know, what about... Time. Nelly, what about... Instead, in, in, instead of making... Um, sorry, sorry, I was going to ask. I was going to add, instead of making empty promises um, years after years, you know, let's, let's get to the solution. We do know that we've got a problem. Victoria Police have just come out and admit that we've got gang problem. Why is this, this moron still um, being in denial? Well, Cot, let's go back to you. Are you delusional? Are you in denial? And you say, you said in your previous response that this crime doesn't have a colour. It does. Look at that family in Melbourne overnight who had a gang of young African men burst into the house and, and, and hold someone. Uh, unlike what Nelly Orr is saying, I'm not delusional, but I'm on the ground fixing issues. For example, I'm helping a Victorian state uh, as a volunteer, uh, unpaid, 
uh, patrolling the street, talking sense into young people as an, a way of uh, an early intervention. Uh, I, for example, uh, have not applied to the state government for a funding for a project and failed to be funded like nearly your and go on a rampage trying to uh, make a vendetta against the state government for being unsuccessful. There are many ways you should be able to get involved. Uh, I'm not being used by the state opposition, for example, to try and uh, use, be used against my own community to put them down for political motivations or personal motivations to try and put my own community down rather than being part of solutions. But why yes, is, sorry to there interrupt. There is a need for a community intervention to assist Bikra police where there is an early intervention or being part of a crime stopping which all uh, Victorians or all Australians are part of to try and find solutions to make sure that our state is safer. Why are you so reluctant though to call this a gang problem? Uh, I haven't said that I'm reluctant to call it a gang problem. I'm on the ground uh, dealing uh, on the ground day and night with young people. I've been out on Moomba night, I've been out on White night, I've been out on New Year's Eve and I'm in the middle and mix and among these young people engaging with them on the ground. What I'm seeing is that there are a core of them who are disillusioned, obviously out of touch with the reality. Uh, a lot of them also facing a lot of drug and alcohol problems. And uh, at the same time, uh, a lot of them obviously are using uh, op opportunism, as I would call it, just for the sake of being uh, opportunistic to right, try and hold commit your crime thought because I want to get to Tony Fairleadies. Tony, let's go to you now. Are they, <laughs> we seem to be reluctant to use the word gang here. Are these just disillusioned kids running around or are they pure gangs and what are we going to do about it? Well, I think, uh, I think they're gangs. Um, I kind of agree to some extent uh, about the colour thing. I mean, uh, today it's black Africans, tomorrow it could be someone else. But to me, the real problem li uh, lies with the government. Uh, and the judiciary. Uh, you can talk all you like about, uh, you know, counselling and whatever, whatever. But the fact is that uh, some of these people are going before the courts uh, and then they're getting off with a little tap on the hand, uh, re-offending within days. Why isn't the government having a really good look at this? And uh, what is the police minister doing? What do you I mean, think they're scared of, Tony? The why, aren't they, why have they got their head in the sand? Oh, look, I think a bit of it's uh, obviously, uh, it's all about vote catching in the end and political, uh, political correctness. Um, I think they just, they're just not showing leadership all the way through. The judiciary is something that I, it's really just under a cloud. I don't get it at all. I've spoken uh, to lawyers that are my clients here and they don't even understand it. Uh, some of them have said to me they've been congratulated for getting people off who they thought would go straight to jail. So if you've got a situation where the, the, the lawyers themselves don't understand it, uh, how are we going to get it? The other thing is I think the police uh, are also sitting on their hands a little bit. I mean, it's a very powerful organisation, the police force. Why not go to the government and say, we're having trouble with this? I'm talking about the hierarchy now. I know the rank and file, they come in here, talk to us, and I know a few policemen. Uh, they're very disappointed. They go to court, nothing happens. They're there all day. Guy gets off, reoffends a few days later. We're so the, the problem doesn't actually lay with the gangs. Yes. Sorry. Well, we should point out that we actually invited the Victorian Premier, the uh, Victoria's Police Minister, Victoria Police, all to join us this morning. All of them declined. Um, read into that as you will. Um, but Nelly, I want to go back to you and say, what do you do? What, what do we do to fix this problem? Look, um, apart from the um, stating the obvious in terms of lack of employment, lack of education, the, the core problem, you know, starts within the um, our leaders within the within the community. You know, this is parental guardian guardianship. Um, the thing is, um, the our current leaders have a, a massive gap um, in terms of communicating with youth that are that that are at risk. You've got community leaders again, such as. Um, Mr. Mano, who you know for years you know have been using funding to to, to um to use to rehabilitate these disadvantaged youth, and again you know nothing has been done. These these leaders are profiting for themselves, and you know the kids are suffering the consequences. All right.
Nelly. But again, you know, coming back to your um, your question, I do think um, having a, a new approach, a new, um, a different approach in terms of um, you know having a one-on-one -on -one, um, intervention with these troubled youth at, at risk, I think it's probably it's paramount. It's something that hasn't been done previously, and I think you know if our leaders um, within the within the African community are not fit to lead, I do I just I reckon they should just resign because. Um, they've, met, they've, um, they've, just, they've been in embarrassment and they've just been, you know, cashing in on a profit that could be used to help um, disadvantaged youth. OK, Nelly, thank you very much. Cot and Tony also, thank Can you I all very by... much. Tony, give us a brief point. We've got to wrap to news. Uh, I think a brief point would be that uh, definitely the government has got to take all of this very seriously. I think Melbourne's uh, under, a, under a minor siege. And uh, the uh, police have got to be out active in the streets, not just cars parked in the street. We should be able to see them. If that means more police, then that's what we've got to have. OK. I and think that could, that could apply to a whole lot of judiciary. criminal issues. I was right. gonna, you okay. know, Michael, I was, gonna, I was just quickly going to add... Very finally. briefly, Nelly. You there? Yes. Yeah, look, um, I was going to say, look, this is a message to the Victorian government as well as the um, African leaders. I, do, I just want you to um, act swiftly. Um, you know, for, for, with the, for the Premier and the leadership, you know, get your head out of your ass. And I do, um, come election time, if you don't get re-elected, you'll know the reason why. Because we are fed up, we are sick and tired of having to live in fear. Michael, we are sick I... and tired of having to... Can I add okay. by saying that the point is professional on a TV. All right. Gentlemen, thank you very much. I think we've made the final point there. Thank it you. is thank a you. it is gosh, it's a hot topic, it really it's a hot is. Topic. The reluctance to use the word gang though is just beyond me. I don't know why people are so worried about that. It just is an issue.